Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. And we're doing trade talk again. This is my on the fly, no frills, having fun trade talk that I like to do. Uh, we have, we were pretty good in some of them. We had McCabe going to Toronto. That was the, I think it was the second most likely team that we had him going to. Um, we had, oh, we also had uh, O'Reilly going to Toronto. So we did well there. Uh, we hit a bunch of them. I do this right on the fly. No frills. I'm a professional handicapper. If you like to make money, bpowpicks.com. But every once in a while, I like to take a break from statistics and just talk some trades. And I have an interesting one coming right now. It's uh, something that nobody, I don't hear anybody else talking about, or very many people. But I do have an article that does talk about it. And I like to read between the lines. That's how I usually do very well at these, uh, picking where players may go and the return that they may get and all of those sort of things like that. Um, Thatcher Demko from the Vancouver Canucks. Um, we're going to look at an article where Farhan Lauji from TSN, I believe, mentions a few things. And then everybody in Vancouver line is going to be like, yeah, but Demko said that that wasn't true. Really? All right. We're going to look at the article and see exactly what Demko said. I personally think Demko would not mind moving on from Vancouver. That's what I personally believe. After watching all the crap that's gone on there in the last little while, um, he is from the United States. I think that has something to do with it as well. A lot of guys like to being in the United States, closer to family and all that kind of stuff like that. And we're going to look at Demko, what he is, and we're going to look at seven or six or seven teams. I can't remember where he would go. You'll find out as we do the video. Settle down. Um, so that's all part of the Steel Flowers All Sports Network. If you like all the sports in the land, you will like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, that's enough from my face. Pretty sure you weren't coming here to see this mug. Here we go. Here's the article in question. <clears throat> Thatcher Demko clears the air on trade rumors. Now, we'll see if he does or not. Does the Canucks top goalie want out? And this is hockey. Uh, where was this? Sports grid. Oh, sorry. It's, it's uh, HF Hockey. Sport hockey feed, right? Yeah, good, good publication. I, you know, usually puts good information out that I always see. It's not bogus, anyways. Earlier this week, the Vancouver Canucks and the New York Islanders blew the barn doors with the Horvat trade, right? It was a blockbuster deal, and everybody was all excited because every in the land because Patrick Allen made a big move. There have been reports the Canucks are looking to move veteran defenseman Tyler Myers, Luke Shen, which already moved. And as well as Brock Besser. But earlier this week, Sportsnet insider Elliot Friedman suggested that the Canucks could be looking to trade goaltender Thatcher Demko. Now, Elliot Friedman comes up and when he comes up and says this, there's usually something to it. But when Canuck, when Farhan Lauji, a Canucks insider, echoed Friedman's report saying himself that he heard rumors that Demko doesn't want to stay in Vancouver. Now, you say, well, rumors, rumors, rumors. Farhan Lauji, his reputation in the Canucks organization, even just to say this, stirs up a lot of fire because it's just not something that Farhan Lauji does. He just doesn't throw stuff around. He has to talk to all these guys all the time. Um, he has a reputation to uphold with the players, with the organization, with everything. I, this is what piqued my interest. When it was Farhan Lauji that also backed up the statement. Um, not that I think that uh, Elliot Friedman talks out of his butt either. He has a responsibility to the NHL, but it's not specifically to Vancouver. Um, does, does Demko want to be here? I've heard from people around that are close to it, that Demko doesn't want to be here. There's conversation in the background and Demko isn't enamored with the market, the scrutiny and the organization. So, now, 
Yeah, and he goes on to say that he thinks they would be crazy to trade Demko, but if he doesn't want to be there, he doesn't want to be there. So they said, apparently now, Demko threw that aside. There's another thing, too. Lauji would not say this, I'm positive, without at least talking to the agent of Demko and saying whether he could say this or not. It's just not something that he really has to be careful what he says about players and all that stuff like that. He's going to get in a lot of trouble. Um, thankfully, Canucks insider and goalie guru Kevin Woodley reports the Canucks have not been chopping Demko, okay? I don't, on the trade market. I imagine they haven't been, but how many phone calls are you going to get if this comes out right now, right? Like, they're not going to say, they're not going around saying, hey, do you want Demko? But I'll tell you what, phone calls are coming in even at the hint of Demko being available. Certainly hasn't been any I want out of here trade request. I had a chance to ask. There certainly hasn't been any I want out of here trade request. That tells you nothing. That is not what I want to hear from my number one goaltender. When Farhan Lauji comes out, I want to hear that's absolute bogus. I don't want I want to be here. I love it here. Blah, 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 blah. That's not what he said. He said there hasn't been any I want out of here trade request. Probably not lying. Probably hasn't said that. But you can tell your agent, hey, you know, you can get it out there. Then, and you say, well, why wouldn't he just be honest? Well, he's got a fan base. Dem uh, players ha are a brand. I don't know if you know that. I realize that or th have thought about that. I'm sure you kind of know that. But have you thought about the fact that the player has a brand? He sells himself. He has fans that he doesn't want to hurt. There's just ways you don't, you have teammates. You don't want to come out and say stuff. But if he's kind of wanted to go on for a while, this is one way of kind of doing so, but not doing so at the same time. So you don't have to take the heat. And that's what I'm getting from this. And when I'm doing these trade videos, it seems I'm quite often fairly accurate at uh, when this sort of thing happens. So let's take a look here. Had Vancouver up. Um, so you can take it as you want. If, uh, I was right about to Foley when that situ when the situation pretty much was similar to this. Um, who, who else was I right about? Oh, I talked about Horvat right from like long time ago. Long before he was traded. Everybody thought, oh, he's not being traded just because they signed Miller, blah, 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 blah. I was reading between the lines from what I was hearing and what I was seeing. And I'm reading between the lines here, and I really think that it's quite likely that Thatcher Demko won't be here. At least, maybe this is a summer deal, but it could be at the trade deadline, which isn't which isn't too far away, like a couple of days away. Um, what would they want in return? Well, probably they would like a goaltender uh, for sure, because since they only have Dalia and Spencer Martin, uh, but they you know they do really like that. Uh, Archer Seawoffs, and he looks like he's going to be very good. He really does look like he's going to be a very good goaltender, but he probably won't be ready for a while. So he'd want a goaltender. Um, they, they'd they want a, another piece, like a, probably a first-round pick. I think they would want a first-round pick, a goaltender, maybe even a prospect, if it was going to happen at the deadline. This could happen in the summer. I think it's maybe more likely it could happen in the summer. But there are a couple teams here that I think would stretch to do it right away. So we're going to look at uh, seven teams that he may go. We number uh, Thatcher Demko. What is he? A six, he's from California. That's going to come in to play as we talk about each team that he may go to here. Um, he's making five million dollars a year, which is actually fairly reasonable for a number one goaltender with the abilities he's had. Now, he has been injured quite a bit this year, and his numbers are not good this year. But behind that Vancouver defense, I don't know how his numbers could ever be very good, to tell you the honest truth. Um, even, even last year and the year before. A 2.72 in a, in a .915 with the defense that Vancouver has is actually really not that bad. 
I don't think there are too many goaltenders out there that would have better numbers with Vancouver's defense. And uh, so, he, I mean, when he was in the bubble, when they went to the finals, he was fantastic. He has shown that he can be absolutely brilliant. He's shown that he can be a money goaltender. And if he's out there, we're going to look at teams that are at least going to be scratching their heads going, hmm, man, oh, man, oh, man. First one, Carolina Hurricanes. Uh, it's This is probably to, like, Carolina, as we go on here to the seventh one, is probably from the least likely to the most likely. But... Carolina has just had so many injuries. I, I got to think that they have to be at least a little bit concerned with the injury problems they've had with Frederick Anderson. I, I Maybe even more than a little bit. He can't seem to stay healthy. And Antti Ranta is a serviceable goaltender, but is he going to be a guy that can bring you to the promised land? Not in my books. Uh... I don't think so. I'm not even sure. Frederick Anderson, when he's perfectly healthy, playing at the top of his game, sure. But if you have an opportunity right now, I know Thatcher Demko has had his previous injury problems. Goaltenders get injury, injured, but he's not like an injury problem all the time, all the time, all the time. It was a one-off thing. Frederick Anderson, I'm almost positive, does not have a no-trade clause. Oh, he does. There's a moderate 10 team no trade list. So I'm not sure if he could be part of this deal or not. Um, he's making $4.5 million right now, and he's going to be an unrestricted free agent at the end of the year. I have a feeling that they're not going to be giving him another contract, anyways. So even if you put Anti Ranta in this deal, and you went and you went with Frederick Anderson and Demko, at least whoever you decide to start in the playoffs, even if you start Frederick Anderson, you know you got Demko there. If you start Demko, probably Demko rolls all the way through. Their whole team is set, they, and, and they still have more trade possibilities here. Their, their whole team is set every other way. A beautiful defense, a wonderful pickup of Puglia Harvey, which honestly I doubt he's going to stay down here in the bottom uh, you're gonna love, love, love him in Carolina. I'll tell you that right now. I'm an Oiler. I'm an Oilers fan. I've watched him. The Oilers underappreciated this guy all the crap, and uh, I think he's gonna do very well. But the only thing I see a question mark is goaltending. Not because I don't think Fred, Frederick Anderson's good when he's when he's really good. It's just that he seems to get injured. I'd want backup. Now, what are you willing to pay for him? That's the thing. It's kind of a tough ask. You could go, I, the first in 2000, I think you could get away with the first in 2024. Anti Ranta, so they have a goaltender. You know, they may be able to sign him for a little bit while they wait for uh, uh, Seahawks to become their number one. And uh, a prospect, they need a defenseman. They need a defenseman really bad. I'd say Dylan Coughlin. Dylan Chatfield used to play there already. Dylan Coughlin, 25 years old. He's actually, he's had a really good year. They could give him a good shot there. Ranta, and they get the, and they get the first pick. And you get Demko at $5 million a year for the next couple of years, which is only 500000 more than Frederick Anderson. It's a steal of a deal if he, as long as he stays healthy, which I believe he will. There's no reason to think he won't. People get in, go to, team, players get injured. It's not like he's been an injury problem over and over and over again, Demko. You let Frederick Anderson move on at the end of the year. You have incredible backup uh, for goaltending. For once, you don't have to worry. And... Uh, you have Demko long term. I, I would, I would definitely consider this deal. What do you think, Carolina fans? 
that's your Demko to Carolina. Would you give up that much? Would you give up the first? I mean, I think you'd have to as we look at every team down here, what they could offer. Um, I think you'd have to give up something like that in order to do it. Now, that being said, you don't have to do it this year. But I think Carolina is a team that if they're going to do it, they would want to do it this year if they could. You know, where we're talking about other teams where it might be in the summer. In the summer. Okay, next. Ottawa Senators. If I'm Ottawa, my ears are perked up big time here. Um, they Forsberg and Talbot just haven't been doing the job. And, you, and I know they're not going to be a playoff contenders. Uh, they might be. I mean, they could go on a run. They're, they just beat Detroit two games in a row. They've got a strong team. It looks like they're playing balls out right now. They could go for a run. So, <clears throat> I, I mean... But I'm not sure I'm totally comfortable with going on a run or if I do happen to make it in with Talbot and Sogard as my goaltender. I just, I'm just not. And, you know, this could happen in the summer instead of now. But why not now? You know, uh, why not get it done now? Why not get your number one right now? Now, the only thing, the reason why I have Ottawa down here a little bit is Demko is American. I'm not sure... It said in the article, go back and look at the article, that he was he he had issues with basically the way Vancouver did their business in a lot of ways. Let's go back to that article again. Um, and now he's not enamored with the market, the scrutiny, and the organization. All of it. So I don't know if that has to do with the fact that he's Canadian, and that's the reason why I have it down here, because he is an American. He may want to go back to the U.S. where he's more comfortable in his home, and he wouldn't be part, be able to be, you know, he would. It makes sense. I mean, if I was, personally, if I was uh, an NHL hockey player, I'd want to play in Canada. There's nothing wrong with wanting to play at home. It's, it's nothing wrong with that. But if not, I, I mean, Ottawa can't give up their first. No doubt about that. Certainly 2023. Um, possibly a 2023 second. And that's still a pretty nice pick. Oh, you don't have it. That 2024 second then. You don't have a second round pick next year. Unless you're super strong, you're going to rock it in 2024. And with Demko, I think they could. You go to 2024 first. Forsberg, so Vancouver has a goaltender. And Forsberg isn't bad, isn't a bad goaltender. He's just not a number one goaltender. No, no way he's a number one goaltender. Um, and all the Vancouver really just needs a goaltender right now until Seawops is ready. Uh, because I think, you know, unless unless something spectacular happens and you see a huge turnaround with the Vancouver. Canucks, and then they'll go get like a true number one. But they probably would be okay with Forsberg. And then they're looking for a defenseman, a uh, young defenseman. And that's going to be the difficult. Maybe Jacob uh, Bernard Docker. I'm not a huge Docker fan. Maybe hopefully they could be. Um, Lassie Thompson is getting pretty expensive, I would say, in a deal like this. Uh, more prospect-wise, Tyler Clevin, something like that. But you're getting a true number one goaltender who has who's shown to be he can be a winner. And I know that they're going to say, "Well, we we got to work on our defense. We got to work on it. you can work on your defense. Still work on your defense. Everything is happening as it goes here. Can't fill every hole all at one time. We need defense more." I actually don't agree with that. You're not going anywhere with this goaltending until until uh, until Mad Sogard shows he can be a number one. He's 22 years old. Maybe he shows it right away. I guess I don't know. Then you got an amazing combo with Demko and Sogard, but uh, Sogard. But uh, I wouldn't want to roll the dice on that. I don't roll the dice on goaltenders. Ottawa Senators fans, subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're on Facebook, just search Perlo Wisdom. NHL Pro Wisdom on YouTube. Subscribe, comment in the comment section. Let me know. I do these trade videos even after the trade deadline because I talk about trades in the summer. I just love talking trades. 
go up. Also, I'll be doing uh, trade analysis videos after the trade deadline, too. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. New Jersey Devils. Um, this one's a little less likely. I think that New Jersey, you know, they just traded for Banachek and they just signed Banachek. Um, he's putting up pretty decent numbers. Just seeing if they could do this cap space wise here. They got two and a half, two point four million in cap space. Um, yeah, because you're bringing in, you're, a goaltender is going to have to go back. Cap is going to work. Cap can work. No problems there. And New Jersey has lots of goaltenders. So Vanacek, two point three seven and a 0.913, which are decent numbers. Decent. It's 27 years old. With to me, with new like uh, from what I've watched with Vanacek is he hasn't improved all that much over what he was in Washington. I don't. I'm not comfortable still. I'm not sure that Vitek Vanacek is a goaltender that can bring you to the promised land. I, I'm just not, and I I can't say that I'm not. I'm sure that. New Jersey is, I can't, but I put him in here because I'm sure Demko can. I'm sure Demko can. And at another 1.5 million for a guy who's already been to the finals once, I would definitely be interested in putting Vanacek in a deal in this deal. Sending Vanacek and uh, maybe a second round pick in a prospect for Demko. I would do that. It doesn't have to be a super awesome prospect either because you're already giving up, you know, a really fairly good goaltender in Vanacek. Uh, maybe Tice Thompson, something. They'll be looking for defense, which you've already given up a lot. That, that would be the biggest thing blocking this deal, I think, is that. New Jersey gave up a lot of their defense prospects in that San Jose trade. And I don't think they're going to trade any roster defensemen uh, going into the playoffs, that's for sure. So they'd have to like somebody here. I don't know which one of these maybe that, that they would like. If there is no defenseman, maybe you got to go with a forward like Nolan Foote or something like that. Um, maybe you gotta do, maybe you gotta swallow it and, and give up the 2024 first too. And 2024 first in Banachek. Something like that. I'm interested in New Jersey fans. If you're a Facebook person right now and you're listening, unfortunately you can't subscribe by hitting the subscribe on Facebook. You can though search Perlo's NHL on YouTube and subscribe there and comment and tell me what you think. I personally, if I could find a way to do this, Damon Severson is somebody that they have been, you know, has been connected to Vancouver quite a bit. I think they would be interested in him. Uh, you could play Smith and Severson spot with Ball. It's a little weaker. But in order to get a goaltender like that, maybe that's it. Damon Severson and Vanacek. Uh, they need defensemen hardcore in Vancouver. Tell me what you think, New Jersey fans. Okay, Buffalo. <coughs> I'm going with Buffalo because they basically, I mean, all with all due respect to Uka Pekka Lukanen, he's only 23 years old. He's got a long way to go. He's very athletic, but he's got a long way to go. I don't see him as a number one, at least for another couple of years. And I see the Sabres as contenders sooner than that, if they had goaltending. And with all that in mind, if a number one goaltender like Demko is available, I'd be willing to trade Lukanen to Vancouver, who would get a really good job in Vancouver there. And... They're looking for a defenseman as well. Uh, somebody per probably that's more ready than not, which I'm not sure that Buffalo has right now. Uh, 
maybe Ryan Johnson, your 2019. You know, Matt Lindgren, he's been uh, progressing pretty well, if I remember correctly. Red Deer Rebels, eh, not fantastic. That could be the thing that blocks this, is I'm not sure they have the defenseman that they could give. I mean, you're not giving Oastland or anybody of that high value. Um... If, they, if they're willing to take a forward, you could go Peyton Krebs. I really don't think they need Peyton Krebs in this lineup to tell you the honest truth. They could fill that spot with some of the younger players. Peyton Krebs, uh, Lukanen, and the first. Something like that. you got to really like Demko for that. But... I mean, Demko like goaltenders don't come around all the time. They're not out there just on, you know, growing on trees. And I honestly don't think Buffalo is going anywhere until they have a number one goaltender. And they should go somewhere because they've got amazing talent. I mean, Owen Power at 20 years old is playing out of his world. I don't see him regressing. Darlene is hitting like Vesna type caliber. Samuelson was a great pickup. Fantastic defensively. Defense is set. Forward group is is just crushing. Thompson, Quinn, Middlestat, Cousins, Paterka. My gosh, you can bring guys up from the minors that can still play to fill that spot. Um, in uh, uh, Picard, And you've got prospects coming up like crazy right now. They've got prospect after prospect that should be able to fill that spot that spot down the road. Not to mention, it's just a third-line center spot. You could even grab one from Vancouver. Now that I'm saying that, <clears throat> you could grab, because they've got lots of centers. They could throw a center in this deal for you that you could take Jack Studnicka, put him in there. He's about the same. I think Krebs would be more valuable than Studnika for sure. He's kind of a step down. But when you're getting a shut down to goaltender, why not? Buffalo Sabres fans, tell me what you think about that. If you're on Facebook, you can't subscribe on Facebook. So search for Perlo's NHL. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and talk to me. I like to hear it. There you go, Pittsburgh Penguins. This is less likely. I actually should have put this down lower, a little bit lower. The main reason why I got the Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh Penguins here, and the biggest problem is that the cap space is going to be extremely difficult in this deal. They have like, well, two million cap space, and he makes five million. But actually, that's not the major problem. The major problem is Jari would have to be part of the deal. He is from BC, and there would have to be more. And there's not much of a prospect in for Pittsburgh. It's possible that Pittsburgh could be looking more to the fact that if you have a shutdown goaltender, you have a chance. I don't think Tristan Jari is a shutdown goaltender. And you're going to say, well, he's got the same numbers as Demko. If Tristan Jari was in Vancouver with that defense, I can, I would bet my bottom dollar his numbers would not be as good as Demko's. Nowhere near it. Demko's big. He's rangy. He's he's amazing, and he can win. He can win for you. Um, I think this would be a deal where Vancouver gives a defenseman to fill a role, and Marcus Peterson goes back. They love those squeaks in Vancouver. Tristan Jari and Marcus Peterson, something like that. And, you know, they, they throw, like, Gillum, Gillum, Griezbois, or um, something like that. Just a guy that has, that's played minutes. He's only 25 years old. You can work with him. Is he as good as Peterson? Peterson? No. No, he's not. And you might, Pittsburgh might even have to throw a pick in there, too, if they had any second-round pick or something like that. But if they really want to win now, if they're really thinking that they're, they they want to win now, 
I don't know about you. I just don't trust Tristan Jari to take you there. Not with the lineup that they have. Their lineup is a little thin, flimsy throughout. And, um, you know, top heavy. Defense is a little suspect. I know losing Marcus Peterson for Brisbane doesn't really help all that much. But getting Demko makes up for it to me a lot more over Tristan Jari. I just think he is significantly better than Tristan Jari. And not to mention, long term, he's going to be a better goaltender for Pittsburgh if they want to keep on adding to this lineup and keep on throwing darts at the board and hoping they win with Crosby and Malkin. I don't know how long they're going to do that for. But if they are going to do it for a long time, I'm not sure I want to rest my chances with Tristan Jari if I can get a Demko. There's a guy that can maybe win a series for you. How do I know? Because he already did it for Vancouver when they played against Dallas, when they made it to the finals. Or, no, when they lost in the semifinals, I should say. He, he already did it. So, uh, when, or the conference finals. And uh, I, I haven't seen Jari do it, have you? Tell me what you think, Pittsburgh fans. Would you be interested in something like that? Comment in the comment section, let me know. Facebook people, subscribe. To my channel and tell me what you think. All right, Vegas Golden Knights, and I have Vegas here basically because they just do this stuff. I mean, they gotta know their goaltending isn't good enough to be able to. Sorry about the interruption. They got to be know their goaltending isn't good enough to, to win a cup. And they're, they're, they're in it to win a cup, and that's it. Simple as that. I mean, you know that. Anybody that's watched it, their whole idea, whether you like the moves they did or didn't like the moves they did, everything they have done has been for the purpose of winning a cup now. Aiden Hill and Logan Thompson... I don't believe is bringing you the promise line. Now, Logan Thompson is a Calgary Alberta boy. And, you know, it's not far from Vancouver. He's 26 years old. He probably he still has a lot of upside. No doubt about that. But he's not going to win you. I don't think he's winning you anything now. You could put him as part part of the deal, but you're going to need to do way more than that, I realize, because you're going to need to somehow get cap space. But you got Mark Stone off, and it doesn't look like he's coming back. So they actually have the cap space to do this deal. Now, for me, you can have a solid roster, which you can argue that Vegas does, you know, I especially on defense. I think their defense is fantastic. But... Offense has been difficult for them. They haven't been scoring all that much this year. Now, in the playoffs, that's not going to matter as much, but you still need to score. However, you certainly need to keep the puck out of the net. Vegas is actually a really good defensive team. Goaltending has let them down several times this year. Thatcher Demko just might be that. It might it just would probably fill that hole. And yes, he he has had poor numbers this year. He has been injured this year. But it's not an injury that's supposed to keep him out for a long time or reoccurring or anything like that. And he's shown to be a winner. He's shown that he can carry a team when he was in the bubble in the playoffs. Now, they didn't win a cup or anything like that, but that team probably shouldn't have been beaten who they were beating. Demko was the reason. And if you have a team like Vegas, which I think is better than those Vancouver teams, uh, you can do it. You might be able to make it. Now, so whatever goes back, that's the difficult part because Vegas has exhausted a lot of their prospects and picks. Oh, they got the 2023 first. You don't need that. Who cares? 2023 first. Um, and whatever, uh, they, they're going to look for a defenseman. They would prefer a defenseman that is ready to play right now, but I, I mean, they're not likely going to get that from a contender because they need 
they're going to, like, Vegas is going to need every defenseman that they have for their playoff run. So it would have to be a prospect. And I like Daniel Miramonov. I, I thought he played well with his time up in the lineup. And I, I, I think Vancouver may be interested in somebody like that. First round pick, Miramanoff. And it looks like Nicholas Roy is, uh, it's kind of losing his spot. You got Howden, Chandler Stevenson, Carlson. I mean, you could put Brett Howden, but I don't think he turns the needle. I think Nicholas Roy could, though. Uh, and Vancouver could use another center. They, they got like Mills Allman up there in the center spot right now. And honestly, not much coming up, not much in the injured reserve or anything to fill the spot after they lost Corva. So. I think they they could have some interest in Roy. So Roy, Thompson, and a first round pick in two thousand twenty three. Would you do it, Vegas Kings? Comment in the comment section and let me know. Now the old number one L was L A. But they went out and got Corpusalo. However, you know what? I've decided. I'm going to go back to them anyways. Not because they're going to do it this year, but because they picked up Jonas Corpusalo, who has shown to be a really good in the second half here, but is historically really not been a true number one. He could go on a run, kick ass in the, in the playoffs, and they decide, you know what? Now that he's back to healthy because he had injury problems, we're gonna we're gonna let it fly with, with Jonas Jonas Corpusala. But I also think there's a really good chance they realize he ain't a number one and we need a true number one. This wouldn't happen at the deadline, of course. This would be in the summer. But Demko to LA to me makes a lot of sense. One of the big reasons why Demko's from California. So if it don't work out with Corpusalo, like I expect LA, if Demko truly is available and he doesn't go anywhere at the deadline, that LA will be going hard for him. They're really, to me, a number one goaltender away. And we'll see if Corpusalo can be that. He just hasn't ever shown that he can be. So it's hard for me to say that he's going to. But with the um, <clears throat> with the forwards and defense that they already have, especially if they can sign Gavrikov or fill in some other holes, uh, Demko to me would push this team into uh, consistent contender status, high end consistent. So I thought I'd bring it up. Watch out for that, LA fans. Comment in the comment section. Tell me what you think about that, LA fans. Uh, remember, this is a uh, uh, if you're on Facebook, search Perlo's NHL Pros of Wisdom or Perlo NHL. Subscribe to my channel and let me know what you think. I'll be doing a lot of trade talk after the trade deadline. I'll be doing trade talk about the summer. I talk about trades all the time because it's my favorite thing in the land. So comment, subscribe, and be part of the frolic, my friends. Have a great day.